Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 4. So in this tutorial we're going to carry on with our terrain and we're going to make this world come a bit more to life. So we're going to bring in some trees, we're going to bring in some bushes and we're going to do what we can to make this look a little better as it were rather than just plain and hilly as it is now. Don't forget click on that subscribe button and click on that bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything I upload in this series and everything else on video game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, so far we've dealt with the terrain just with the texturing and obviously we want to put down things like grass and trees and plants and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth with a lot of the stuff with it, however we will eventually make it look really really cool by going in depth. So for now what we need to do is create a folder to store all of the terrain, um, well I say objects but they could be anything really. So right click create folder and we'll call this terrain assets. Now we're going to do this a little bit differently. Um, you could theoretically drag and drop a lot of things onto the terrain, but that is a very slow and awful way of doing it. So we are actually going to make the terrain do it for us. So if we go into the terrain assets folder, I'm going to import these three. So one is a tree, one is some grass and another is kind of like shrubbery. Uh, you can get these on the website if you head over there, go to the Downloads and Assets section and go to the FPS Battle Horde series, you'll be able to download them for free. So I'm going to drag and drop these into Unity. It'll take a little bit longer than it does with textures simply because a little bit bigger because this is an actual uh, model. And as always remember to extract out the zip file before you try bringing them into Unity because you can't bring them into Unity from a zipped folder. Now I am going to basically lower a little bit of this terrain for now. Again it's up to you how you want to have your terrain. Um, I am going to smooth it out a little bit. So just to kind of recap a little bit on this, um, and to be honest, by the time you get to some of uh, this tutorial, Unity may decide to change the terrain again. However, the principles of the terrain are always going to remain the same. You'll always find these different things. So I'm just going to smooth height and just smooth it a little bit. So let's start with our trees in this center bit here. Okay, so how do we do it? Well. Do you remember these little options up here? We can use these. So the first one is paint trees. So if we click that option, we now need to get whatever tree is here into here. So we can go to edit trees and click on add tree. This will bring up a nice simple pop up. And all we need to do in here is bring in the tree that is named tree 02. Yes, the folders are tree 01, but we're bringing it bringing in tree 02. It's just a name. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I do have other assets that I'm going to introduce slowly into this scene, but um, for now we're just going to stick with this one. So drag and drop that onto there. We don't need to worry about uh, shadows or bend factor at the moment. Uh, we just need to click on add. And all that will do is if we click back onto the terrain, it will add the tree right here. Now, much in the same way that we have placed uh, the texture down, we can do the same sort of thing with trees, like so. So all I've done there is literally just click my left mouse button and we have trees appear. So I'm just going to undo that for now because that is way too many clustered trees. I'm going to increase the brush size and I'm going to decrease the tree density. I'm going to increase the tree height, not fully, but I'm going to have it somewhere about there. So what this will do is this will randomize, because we have it ticked, each of the tree's heights. So every tree will be randomized in height when we press the left mouse button to place it. So you can see there, because we have a rather large um, surface area for the brush and a low tree density, they get placed quite far apart. Now, it's up to you how you want to deal with this and how many trees you want. 
But if we were to basically click again and again and again, it will eventually fill up. But that's just using more clicks than you would ever really need to. So I'm going to undo all that again. We want a kind of a maybe a foresty area for this first map. So we are going to have the tree density about 70 ish. And I'm going to have the trees quite tall, but I'm still going to have them randomized. And you also may want to tick lock width to height. So this puts everything in proportion. If we untick that, the trees may look a little bit unproportionate. However, trees are trees. You know, they look weird in real life, some of them. So I guess that is entirely up to you whether you want to have it locked to the width and height or not. So surface area again on a brush size, still not good enough. Let's put the tree density up full. Click again, still not good enough. I want a nice concentrated area. So to do that, let's reduce the brush size. And I'm going to reduce the tree density once again. However, we should see a nice kind of denser packing of the trees now. So let's place a few around the map, here, there and everywhere. Obviously, we're going to put more trees in at some point. But now we can see the world is slowly coming alive, albeit a bit bland. But, you know, we are only in tutorial number four. So, OK, so we've got trees. That's all good and well. What about flowers and grass and shrubs and all kinds of stuff like that? OK, well, it's a similar sort of effect. If we click on the icon next to it, the paint details, and we need to click on new brush. So what this gives us is a selection that we can choose to have, in this case, grass. Now, be careful when you're picking the grass because you may not pick the right texture. We can't, for example, pick the grass 001 because that will just make the grass look ridiculous. It, it'll just look silly. That's why we need this grass flow, the one we've just imported. The reason why we use grass flow is because it is um, a deleted background. So we see the grass, but the Basically, the back bit of it has been deleted, so like a PNG. So let's choose Grass Flow. And if we click, helps if we actually uh, select it properly, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> uh, let's click Edit Details. And um, yeah, I don't know why I click New Brush. It's not New Brush, is it? The brush is something that we'll deal with later on. Uh, it's, it's a nice way of creating our own style. I've done this backwards. I actually plan these tutorials ahead of time and I've done this bit backwards, but never mind. And um, we just need to add the grass texture and then select the grass texture from there. So select the little, little radar button there and click on grass flow. Now, healthy color and dry color. I'm going to leave them as they are for now and just select my grass. And let's have opacity as full. And click again, and we can see the grass slowly start to appear. Now, this grass doesn't look too bad at all. If we keep clicking, we can see how the grass reacts. Now, if we go back to Edit Details and go to Edit, we can change the healthy color and dry color. So if I change the healthy color to white, you'll see the dry color takes precedence because basically white is, you know, just the way it is. It's just the way that the colors work. If we put it as black, again, it just basically takes the dry color and applies the black tint to make it the way it is. So if you permanently want green grass, the way you've got to do it is if you have, let's say about that green there, and then change the dry color to a nice white. And we should be able to see that it doesn't look too bad. Again, you can change it to green fully and make it look nice like that. But again, it's all about how you want your map to look. Um, it, it's just how you want it. I can't tell you how to make your grass look. That's something you've got to work on. So I'm going to have mine uh, more to the white there. So my grass about like that. And click on apply. Now, obviously, you can keep doing your grass like so. All good. And now let's get to the brush. So a way of creating a new brush is basically being able to select uh, a brush and creating it. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to create a brush, if indeed you want to create one. Uh, there are 
tons of different things to do like this one we've just created that new brush and created this new brush based on a texture um, the texture itself isn't really relevant per se but you can see how the brush is affecting it so it's always worth playing around with it and trying it out and obviously you can play around with it and do what you need to do with it uh, remap it you can fall you can just change it like that bring it down perfect so realistically as a beginner you don't really need to worry about the brushes but by all means have a go now back to the grass again we could actually do the exact same grass uh, texture but a completely different color so if we go to edit details and add grass texture let's do the exact same grass there and let's change the healthy color to a red and let's change a dry color to let's have it kind of an orange a dark orange and then click add and then select the grass and then click so although we've just selected the exact same texture we've been able to manipulate it enough to make it look completely different so that is how you can have a variation of grass in your game and obviously you can change the brush size settings whenever you do anything with it it's, it's just entirely up to you um, next thing let's deal with some shrubbery which is in the terrain assets again and it's this shrub and this works the same way as grass so if we go to edit details and let's add grass texture and then select it and choose shrub 001 there we go and I'm going to have the healthy color set as a dark green and the dry color set as white and then I click on add select the shrub and now what I'm going to do is decrease the brush size a little bit decrease the opacity and decrease the target strength obviously the target strength makes it how much is there so if we have this bit as shrubs there we go and this bit as shrubs as well now if we go to the game view it's going to look absolutely ridiculous so uh, before we end this tutorial i'm going to move the camera to this section here where we've actually played around with the terrain more than anything so let's take our camera and select the right tool and let's bring it all the way over here oh. and oops it helps if I actually select the x axis arrow doesn't it and let's bring it to about here and across just a little bit so now if I press play we should actually see some movement, but only, only in anything that is classed as grass. There we go. The reason we don't see any movement in the trees will become apparent in the next tutorial. So what I would recommend you do for now, guys, is explore. Find trees, maybe on the asset store. Find some grass textures. Find some flower textures. Find anything at all. Now, keep in mind that the map we're creating here is just the first. This is just where we're learning things. Obviously, we're going to create different types of maps. We might have a city map, might have uh, kind of like a beach map or, you know, anything at all. And you can create anything you want. Um, so I think we've pretty much got a lot of the terrain stuff down now. you would probably be able to go freely and create any kind of terrain you want. Next tutorial. I'm still going to add in a couple more trees because it's something I'd like to bring in gradually. You know, just maybe take one or two minutes just to add in some more trees, some more, va more variants. Uh, so we're going to deal with the environment. We're going to add in a skybox and we're going to deal with making these trees come to life. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.